We have to recognize America's true strength as a country. Let's not get too worked up and just start shouting slogans. And honestly, how many people here have actually been to the U.S.? Those chanting slogans might never have even set foot there. But that's boldness for you, the fearlessness of the youth. Why are the youth so fearless? Because they're like newborn calves who have never seen a tiger. They don't know to be afraid of it, so they stick their heads out, right into the tiger's reach, and the tiger snaps them up. There are two countries in the world that excel at self-criticism, and the first is America. Just look at their blockbuster movies. They constantly criticize themselves, showing America losing wars, the American government failing, and American troops being defeated. Through this constant self-critique, they bring attention to areas that need improvement. And perhaps it's through this process that America continues to grow stronger. In this scene, we see Huawei's former boss, Rung Zhengfei, whose recent remarks online seem strangely pro-American. But his comments also hint at something more. Is he subtly criticizing Chinese President Xi Jinping while also praising the U.S.? China's internet censorship has become so extreme that any terms remotely related to or hinting at Xi Jinping are now blocked. When Ren uses phrases like youthful energy, newborn calf, and self-criticism, they seem to indirectly mock Xi for being inexperienced, overconfident, and lacking self-reflection. Where does he get the nerve? Even Jack Ma from Alibaba, who wasn't as direct in his criticism, faced severe backlash, merely for speaking out against the government. He nearly had his assets seized. So, isn't Ren openly contradicting Xi's usual anti-American stance? And doesn't he fear that Xi might target him? Recently, Ren stated, Huawei still can't say it has survived this year. He stressed the need for Huawei to learn openness and inclusivity from the U.S., adding, Despite global conflicts, scientific research knows no borders. Closing off leads to falling behind. His comments sparked widespread attention. People interpreted his words as, Huawei's phones or cars without foreign core technology are just junk. Huawei was caught trying to bypass sanctions to obtain advanced chips, and their own R&D efforts failed. We've conceded to the U.S., given them high praise. The U.S. should now ease up on Huawei. In a final message to the U.S., Ren said, America's technological prosperity comes from openness and inclusivity. If you aren't open and inclusive to Huawei, it will only bring trouble. Just days after Ren's speech, it was reported that Tech Insights, an American tech company, dismantled Huawei's latest AI accelerator, the Transcend 910B, and found TSMC's 7 nanometer chips inside. TSMC is a leading semiconductor foundry company headquartered in Taiwan. This revelation caused an uproar across global semiconductor and political circles in the U.S. Since the start of the U.S.-China tech war, Huawei has been a primary target. In 2019, it was placed on a U.S. export blacklist, and TSMC has been barred from selling advanced chips to Huawei since 2020. An anonymous Taiwanese semiconductor executive suggested that some Taiwanese IC design firms may have bought products from TSMC, packaged them in Taiwan, and then sold them to another Chinese company, which then eventually passed them on to Huawei. He explained, with so many intermediaries, it's tough for TSMC to verify the sales trail. Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs confirmed that TSMC reported this issue without identifying the specific customer. According to an AFP report, TSMC and this company have an ongoing partnership, suggesting a long-standing relationship. However, TSMC halted shipments after receiving Tech Insights inquiry on October 11th. The situation is now clear. Tech Insights investigations into phone teardown exposed TSMC's chip in the device. Following this discovery, Ren's speech appeared aimed at persuading the U.S. to ease its restrictions on Huawei. On October 31st, Huawei reported that its revenue grew by nearly 30% in the first three quarters, though profits declined. Founder Ren Zhengfei noted that Huawei is still struggling. Public data shows significant revenue growth in Huawei's consumer electronics and automotive sectors, especially with the launch of the 5G smartphone series, the Mate Pro.
However, the low yield rate of Huawei's 7 nanometer chips made by Chinese state owned semiconductor company SMIC comes at a higher cost compared to peers like Oppo and Xiaomi, who use 5 nanometer chips. Huawei's revenue surged, but so did expenses, particularly with the Ascend 910B, which reportedly involves multi layered outsourcing through TSMC. These additional operational expenses have driven up the manufacturing cost of the Ascend 910B, ultimately eating into Huawei's real profits and causing them to decline rapidly. Huawei is currently facing a difficult situation. Not only has its R&D in core chip technology hit a wall and its supply chain been cut off, but its newly launched native Harmony OS is also widely seen as a misguided move commercially. Industry experts in China point out that while Harmony OS is functional, it's unlikely to develop a robust ecosystem. Its native market share is less than a fraction of a percent, and there's minimal developer interest in creating apps for it. Although Huawei claims the new OS natively supports 15,000 applications, it's still far behind Android and Apple's iOS, which each support millions. So why did Huawei launch this operating system? In reality, this is part of the CCP's preparation for a scenario where access to shared technology is completely shut off by foreign powers. It's essentially a wartime backup plan without much commercial or technical rationale. The logic here is similar to the development of China's Long Sun processor. A safeguard against sanctions, a plan B driven by government interests, not market forces. Senior engineer Zhong Shan, who works in Silicon Valley Communications, says Huawei has been laying the groundwork for this move for some time. The CCP has provided extensive time, funds, and social resources to support it, indicating a strategic push for what's known as digital sovereignty. At its core, this is about the U.S.-China rivalry. Another significant reason the CCP insists on pushing Harmony OS is to turn it into a new firewall and surveillance tool. While earlier versions of Harmony OS were compatible with Android, this latest native version is closed, making it the most isolated from American technology today. This division between international software and hardware standards dates back to China's creation of the Great Firewall over 20 years ago. Huawei's phones, from their earliest development stages, were designed with control and monitoring in mind. In June 2022, a Chinese internet user reported that after upgrading to Harmony OS 2.0, any VPN or similar software would be quickly detected, and police would notify users to delete it immediately. Zhongshan notes that Harmony OS is destined to become a surveillance tool. It can monitor activities preemptively, analyzing data directly from traffic packets. Apps like Huawei's keyboard input, photo album, and cloud storage services are capable of pre-monitoring. It doesn't even need to connect online to review content. Huawei is, in reality, a military-industrial giant disguised as a private enterprise. Its products and sales serve the CCP's political and military needs, with the government sparing no expense in supporting it. Ren Zhengfei, a former soldier, is more of Huawei's public face than its actual leader. Huawei's true ownership lies in its two stakeholders, Ren, who owns about 1%, and the Huawei Investment and Holding Corporation Limited Trade Union Committee, which owns the remaining 99%. It's an organization under CCP control. Effectively, the CCP itself is the true owner of Huawei. The U.S. government has long recognized Huawei's unique background and strategic objectives, and it's aware of the security risks it poses by infiltrating civilian and industrial networks nationwide. Since 2019, the U.S. has imposed multiple rounds of sanctions, cutting off supplies from various American chip makers and warning other countries against using Huawei products. That year, they launched the Clean Network Initiative, and numerous countries joined, excluding Huawei from their 5G infrastructure due to security concerns. Since then, Rong Zhengfei, once discreet, has gradually revealed various insider insights to the public. On August 22, 2022, an alleged internal memo from Huawei circulated, featuring remarks attributed to Ren Zhengfei. In it, Ren reportedly said, We need to focus on surviving these top three years, shifting our focus to cash flow and real profits rather than just sales revenue. Our lifeline extends to only 2023 and 2024. Whether we break through is uncertain. Each division must stop telling stories and focus on real results. When forecasting business, there's no room for illusions. Anyone misleading the company will pay the price. Survival is the priority. Surviving means there's a future. 
Economist Davy Jun Huang, based in the U.S., commented on Ren's statements, suggesting they are more of a narrative to present Huawei as a diligent, innovative-driven private enterprise. Huang argues that Huawei's real objective centers on political goals, with economic profit as a secondary benefit. Huawei's aim, according to Huang, is to establish dominance in global information control in the 21st century. Smartphone business is merely one aspect of this mission, which also involves telecom equipment like base stations, local networks, international cables, and surveillance systems. As Huawei's spokesperson, Ren has been careful to distance himself from China's foreign policies, even occasionally voicing pro-Western views contrary to the CCP's anti-American stance. At an award ceremony last year, Ren mentioned his admiration for Western technology's youth and reiterated the sentiment by saying, "I'm actually pro-America." He noted that Huawei prided itself on using the best parts and tools globally, many of which came from the U.S. However, sanctions suddenly cut Huawei off from these resources, leaving them stranded. Some saw Run's comments as expressing discontent over Huawei's struggles due to sanctions, while others saw it as an indication of China's economic downturn, with even prominent business figures speaking out. However, Huang believes these interpretations are overblown. Run's statements aren't necessarily his own views, but part of his role in presenting Huawei's public image, which aligns with the CCP's goals. To play his part convincingly, Ren even announced in 2021, shortly after the U.S. sanctions began, that Huawei would turn to developing AI-powered pig farming technology. The idea of Huawei going into pig farming made headlines, but has yet to materialize. Meanwhile, Huawei's slogan "Far Ahead" has become a popular internet meme, often used humorously. The slogan originated in 2020 when Huawei CEO Richard Yu reportedly mentioned it 14 times in one presentation at the Mate 40 series launch. Since then, "far ahead" became a viral term and was even ranked the top internet catchphrase of 2023. In recent years, Huawei has used "far ahead" frequently in marketing. In September last year, the company even applied to trademark the phrase, only to quietly withdraw the application in January. Recently, reports suggest that Ren Zhengfei issued an internal mandate banning the use of "far ahead" with a penalty of 10,000 yuan for each mention by Huawei CEO Richard Yu. Ren Zhengfei has long worked to maintain a low-profile, pragmatic image as a private entrepreneur. Yet Huawei remains in a difficult position. Liu Peijian, director of Taiwan's Industrial Economics Database, explained that SMIC's technology is still immature and low in yield, only achieving nominal production that lacks true commercial value. This shortfall forces Huawei to rely on third-party sources to acquire advanced chips from TSMC to boost its capabilities. Tech columnist Lin Xiaomin believes that since U.S. sanctions, China's semiconductor industry has focused more on infiltration than actual tech progress. China's tactics reportedly include multi-million-dollar schemes to acquire TSMC's technology and spreading narratives Taiwan about China's semiconductors surpassing the U.S. Those familiar with the semiconductor industries of China, Taiwan, and other free regions understand the vast disparities in capabilities. Ren is fully aware of Huawei's real capabilities and situation. With its true background and political ambitions exposed, Huawei has become a global target. In the foreseeable future, there is little chance for a comeback, as consensus among democratic countries is that Huawei and similar state-affiliated companies are approaching their end. Could Ren's occasional pro-American statements be genuine? Perhaps he is simply stating facts. His role dictates his motives for speaking out, making his personal views less relevant. Even if he harbors animosity towards the U.S., he must project weakness and pro-American sentiment. And if he did genuinely want to move to the U.S., he has no path, as he isn't a true entrepreneur in the traditional sense. As Huawei's identity as a state-owned entity becomes clearer, its value to the CCP is rapidly diminishing. A reality Ren likely understands better than anyone else. Huawei's role in overseas expansion has stalled, leaving it primarily as a domestic surveillance tool. Sanctions have driven up its product costs and impacted quality, placing its operations on an unsustainable path. Since the pandemic, foreign investments have withdrawn irreversibly, and China's economy shows no sign of recovery. Huawei, as a government-funded money pit, may have only limited time. Ren knows that once utility to the CCP reaches zero, his own value will also disappear, leaving him in a precarious position due to his extensive knowledge. 
Given his background, the CCP would never allow Ren to leave the country, nor would he dare to. Legal immigration to the U.S. isn't an option for him either. Ren understands the darkness within the CCP better than ordinary citizens, and he likely recognizes his role. Unlike the true CCP elites, who stay behind the scenes, he is merely a visible glove covering the hand in power. Could Ren ever escape to the free world? Possibly, but only through defection. Regardless of Ren's intent, his pro-American remarks have a positive impact on public opinion in China. Many citizens, after years of CCP indoctrination, may see a glimpse of truth in his words. Meanwhile, figures like Sima Nan and other prominent CCP online commentators are the most problematic. They publicly spread hate and slander against the U.S. while secretly planning their own moves to America, embodying the phrase, anti-Americanism is work, moving to America is life. These individuals execute the CCP's brainwashing policies, making many irrationally hostile towards the U.S. while they escape to live comfortably there. Many people are baffled by how such individuals manage to immigrate to the U.S., perhaps indicating potential CCP operatives within the U.S. government facilitating their moves.